Yo, yo, what's up, fam squad? Oh, Rios came in. Welcome to my crib, MTV. Is that how we do it? Or is, what's the, um, the one where they do like the house tours with the celebrities? I don't, the architect, I don't know who fuck. I don't know what to make a video about. I wanted to make something because I've just been writing a ton, really hunkered in and focused. And I thought, well, I show you around this little space and talk a bit about my writing process and uh, how I turn ideas into finalized screenplays and a little bit about my upcoming project, which is very exciting. You buddy, you want some tea? Okay. How I'll know when I have maybe the seed of an idea is when two things come in mind. There is theme and there is imagery. So imagery is setting, it's world building, it's maybe some base characterization. And then, and then I have uh, theme, which are philosophical ideas, questions, topics, uh, uh, plot lines, just anything that is bothering me enough that I want to explore that I don't really know much about yet, but is really, really interesting and I am fascinated by trying to understand it. And so once these ideas on themselves don't really do much, they just kind of sit in my head all the time. But when two of these ideas, when a set of images and then a theme or idea, when these two ideas or, or topics kind of find a way to connect together, they then form the seed of what can end up being an interesting story. So once I have this idea, story seed, and I commit to it, I need three things. A pack of sticky notes, a Sharpie, and an ungodly amount of unobligated time. So what I'll do is I will just write down every single last idea, bullet point, word, phrase, anything that comes to mind. Good ideas, bad ideas, little ideas, huge ideas, doesn't matter. I don't uh, discriminate on the ideas. I just write them down and I throw the sticky note onto a big window or a wall. I mean, it gets crazy. At this point, I am pacing around my room and this will take me weeks, if not months at a time. Uh, I am not trying to get anything sophisticated, anything fancy. I just want to just get images and themes and post them on the wall. And over time, they will stick there. I will change where they are. I'll start to categorize these sticky notes into different subcategories and they'll find a bit of form and shape. And I'll just kind of, this is what you might call blue skying or brainstorming, whatever it might be. For me, it's just a way to get the images on the wall and not give it too much, I guess, pressure to be anything special. Uh, I spend probably 50% of the writing process here at the sticky note ideation phase. And eventually I'll have just a bunch of, of, of notes in the wall and it looks absolutely crazy. And I mean, like I'll, I'll show you an image of, of one that I had, I was in the hospital a few months ago and I had a whole window just covered in sticky notes. I'll show that image here. That is basically what it ends up looking like when I'm really on a roll and picking up some pace about what the story can eventually become. But again, still, it is still a sapling of what will be this grand big oak tree of a story. So once I found a, a plot or story in order of sort, I will take the most important sticky notes that I've put in a general order of plot and I will rewrite them on three by five index cards. And on one side, I'll write the title of the sticky note and on the other end of the card, I will write a, a few sentences, maybe a paragraph to elaborate on what's going to happen in that scene or in that uh, sequence. And I would basically lay them out over a few days, map out my story and see a little bit, with a little bit more detail, a little bit more elaboration, if it works as a whole. A lot of the time it doesn't and I'll go back to the drawing board on the sticky notes. I'll just kind of rearrange things and just trial and error with the index cards with the three by five cards. And I'll basically just go back and forth until I'm happy. It might take me a week of just looking at the three by five cards and conjure up images of what those cards are. And I can kind of see the sequences in my head play out bit by bit and see if it works as a whole. So I'll spend maybe a week, a few weeks with that three by five index card face. And oftentimes I'll go back and restart from scratch. So I'll take these index cards and I will put them on a scaffolding outline. It's basically just a word document in which I put the index card onto a page on Microsoft Word or Google Docs, whatever, and I will read that and I will spend a few weeks, I might even spend months because I'm changing things constantly, making sure that the structure works. 
All right, I'm leaving Alexandria and I'm on my way to New Orleans to spend a few days there writing. Um, I have now the arc of generally the beats that I want to hit uh, in the story arc for season one. And so now I think it's just getting into the world of New Orleans in order to be able to inhabit this fictional idea of New Orleans, this French Quarter. But I'm also just gonna sit around, probably at some coffee shop or just in, the, in my hotel looking outside writing a bunch. It's just a time to relax and walk. So yeah, I am on my way to New Orleans. I have made it here to my condo in New Orleans. Look at this place. This place is beautiful. I mean, I feel like I'm in a set of a TV show. I feel like this is Alyssa's like cabin. I feel like this is the, this is the, 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 the this is going to be my, like the, the inspiration for the upstairs quarters of the psychic shop. Like this condo area right here. And you know, there's this hallway and I have a nice fancy bedroom here, but this, how many spending all my time here, basically? <laughs> wow, okay, I'm in New Orleans. Trying to um, capture the essence of my new series that I've been writing for the past nine months. I'm really excited. I decided that I'm going to centralize the setting in a fictional version of New Orleans. I don't know if it's gonna be New Orleans or if it's going to be its own thing that is inspired by New Orleans, so. Anyway, I'm gonna be walking around. I'm gonna go probably just walk around French Quarter until I see a psychic shop and get my tarot card reading or something and just kind of meet a few psychics and just kind of <laughs> get into that world and tap in. So, yeah, very excited. So I will title each scene and break down the character narrative beats and I will put them in a specific order and how they're going to be playing on screen. I will write a sentence, maybe two, to describe each beat and how they go from one to the next to the next to the next throughout the entire episode. And so I just do that to make sure that the story makes sense, that it flows, that one leads to the next to the next, and that there's a, there's a, re, there's a rhyme and reason to it. And that in one document helps me do that. And oftentimes I will move things around and change things around and, and, and try to figure out, and this is a difficult part because again, I'm trying to figure out if the structure works. And the important thing is to sort of make it very blurry and out of focus and just slowly get a little bit more in focus over time. After I'm happy with the scaffold, I will move on to the treatment. The treatment is basically just a scaffold, but with a lot more detail. I'll write character descriptions, scene descriptions. I will write some temporary dialogue even, like little bits of dialogue here and there. I just got the image of J. Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson uh, as his character for some reason. Let's 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 play to that. Let's play to that. You know, I I, I that's I don't think that's how I want that character to be. But fuck it, it's it's in my head. Let's play to that. Um, okay. On the phone. Okay, so he's furious and on the phone, right? Phone. Can you see that I'm in the middle of something? <laughs> Can't you see I'm in the middle of something here? I'll try to map out specific time pressure of the scenes and how they flow together um, and how they transition together. Um, again, more in a specific time and how the final piece and how the final cut is going to end up feeling and looking like. That document will be anywhere from like eight to 15 pages depending on how long your script is going to end up being. And that'll take me uh, not as long as the scaffold outline because the scaffold gets a lot of the structural stuff out of the way. The Treatment is basically a way for me to confirm the scaffold outline and if it's not really working I'll go back to the scaffold. I'll go back and forth between those two quite often, but a lot of my writing is spent in Microsoft Word um, and uh, I try to stay away from Final Draft as much as I can because again if you need to edit something or change it dramatically structurally uh, It's gonna be a lot easier to change it and so um, Yeah, I try to I try to stay away from the drafting of the scripts, but the the, the treatment is really where I'm trying to get the, the feeling and the story a little bit. 
I like the way this scene opens up. At the office, she stands beside the coffee machine, huffing and puffing as if it were about to take off into flight. She looks at her watch and lets out a yawn. With the machine falling quiet, she takes the warm cup of sludgy coffee, raising it up. It's almost like writing a short story or like a mini novel in a sense, um, but without as much prose, without as much uh, fancy, interesting writing. It's, it's more about trying to get the beats and the time pressure right, I guess. Now, after all this work, I may be 70, 80% done with the writing. Again, I figured out all of the structural issues and problems and making sure that the work as a whole entire piece functions. Um, only then will I start going into the screenplay and start filling in the gaps and details and, 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 and shades and all this sort of thing in the structure. So I'll go into writing all of our dialogue, our screen direction, uh, our acting direction, our, our slug lines, all of these, these things. I will lay them out in a screenplay and it takes me maybe a week. You know, I, I just started recently turning one of my treatments into a uh, final script. And I started a few days ago and I'm already halfway done with it. And so by the end of this week, it looks like it's gonna be a first draft. And that first draft is already a really strong script. It works structurally. And all of the editing is going to be making sure the dialogue fits right with each of the characters, the screen direction works right, the pacing is, is solid, and making sure that the scene transitions are working. But as far as structure, as far as the actual foundational blueprint of how this thing is put together has already been thought about extensively and so uh, any problems that happen within the script should only be with dialogue with trying to represent the character accurately on the page and not oh shit this scene makes no sense and if that is the case then you've skipped something in the million of steps that you should have been taking prior and since most of the legwork has been done before I even started writing and typing up the script, I only me maybe need what like uh, three, four different drafts of the script until I finally have something that I'm solid with that I'm happy with to go into shooting. But the best part about taking the approach in these different phases is that you figure out the structural problems first and foremost, and then you go into the detail. I have I, I've tried the word vomit process where you kind of just type up the draft and then you just kind of edit you know, for a year or two. But it's, pr it's proven to me to be very difficult because you will find there are fundamental problems with your script and you don't want to fix it because you put so much time making it pretty. It's like when you're drawing, for instance, like you're drawing and then you draw the eye and it's like you shade it in and you do the highlights and all the color and it's beautiful, it's amazing, it's done. Now it's time to start on the second eye and you just can't get it right. And so you just give up on it when and, and, and in reality, the problem is there's something structurally wrong about the first die, but you've already made so much detail about it, you don't want to erase it. And you spend way too much time on the second eye, you ruin the paper, and then you can't finish it. When in reality, the solution would be to just start the first die from scratch again. Because one scene, as good as it might be, if it doesn't match with this scene perfectly, and it feels kind of clunky and messed up, and the whole thing doesn't work as a whole piece, you know, what are you doing? Cinema is is the art of storytelling in time. And so if you don't have the entire thing work in time as a whole, it falls apart and your audience is taken out of it. And that's something that I'm really, really trying to figure out. And so uh, within my screenwriting process, I've, I've decided to adopt that that principle. And, and, and yeah, it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm towards the end now of writing this new web series that I'm very excited to be making. It'll be a very long time until any of you see it. There's this book, Story, by Robert McKee, and uh, it's a great book. Uh, if you're any kind of a writer, you should read it. But he says, um, I, think it was, it was, I think it was in this book, or was it another one? Basically, I think it was in this book. Basically, you want to spend as much time outlining and structuring your screenplay as possible, and you want to stay away from writing dialogue as long as you can. It's basically you put duct tape over your character's mouths and by the time that you get to the point towards the end of the writing process where you write their dialogue, 
uh, their fully formalized and, and, and actualized characters and people and individuals with their own tastes and ideas and, and philosophy and, and, and personalities. And so when you take that duct tape off, finally, they actually have something to say and they can speak in their own voice. And it's a lot easier for you as a writer to write to their voice and not you projecting your own voice onto all their characters. And then all your characters sound the same um, as far as language and, and the way that they speak and what they say. So, you know, it, again, it's having a very blurry story and slowly pulling that focus in. It's been really helpful. I'm talking in circles. Now, that's my writing process. It is a bit over the top uh, and all over the place. Um, and it changes with each project. I mean, I, I, I don't expect that my next project is going to follow exactly the same process, but the general principle and foundations of slowly pulling the story into focus, uh, I am definitely taking uh, as I go forward and extensively outlining in whatever new method I outline. Now, one thing, if you're writing a series, for instance, as a series, you have different episodes. So basically the only difference here, if you follow me, da, 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 da. whiteboard. I stole this from Stranger Things writing process. Stranger Writers, they have a Twitter account and they just post a bunch of stuff and I stole this from them. Basically, you lay out each of your episodes and you break them down into their act structures. The act structure might change. You might only have three acts. In this case, for this story, I decided to go with the Act 1, 2A, 2B, and then Act 3 episodically for six episodes. And basically with each block, I will take the index cards uh, and get the very, very basic like story beats that pivot your story, the turning points. And each scene is supposed to be a turning point, but then there are major pivotal points where you can't really return from or establish something. So I get those points and I lay them out into these act structures. And I try to just make sure, I'm still figuring some of this stuff out. I, I had some other ideas here that I erased earlier because I didn't like them. Um, but yeah, just trying to make sure that the entire season lines up together. So not only is it with the episode or with the film, but you also want to make sure the whole season works together. Yeah, that's my studio. It's just a space in which I can like throw my brain to the walls and, uh, you know, be creative and be an absolute lunatic. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, this is a weird video, so, um, you know, don't judge me for this one. I'm, I'm very ill and incapable of using my brain for more than a couple hours a day, and I only use it to write, and I've already used it to write today, so I'm all over the place delirious. Um, but yeah, I, uh, uh, I have some more YouTube videos planned that I'm very excited about. Um, once I finish writing these scripts, I'll, I'll start working on those YouTube videos. I'm very, very excited about those videos. So I guess stay tuned. Please don't unsubscribe. <laughs>